So when I started using Sublime Text years ago, one of the features that really sold me on the power of this editor is the ability to use multiple cursors and affect multiple selections within a single document at the same time. I really cannot overemphasize, I cannot underscore enough the productivity boost you will get as a developer when you understand how to use multiple cursors and adjust multiple selections simultaneously. So I thought it'd be fun to go through a couple of the multi-cursor features that I use literally every day, many times a day when I'm writing my code using Sublime Text. And I've tried to break this down into individual files so we can look at kind of one feature per file, keep it simple, not get too overwhelmed. So the first feature that I learned to use was the ability to take a selection of text and break it apart such that each line of that selection receives its own cursor. And to do that, we just hit Command Shift L. And as you can see, I now have a cursor at the end of every selection broken down by line. And at this point, I can start to move those cursors around. I can add content at all of those cursors within the document simultaneously. Super awesome. Again, multi-line selection, Command Shift L breaks that selection on a per line basis, putting a cursor on each line. Okay, what's next? The next feature is the ability to hold down the Alt key and just drag across the document. So whereas before we broke the multi-selection line using Command Shift L, we can do the same thing essentially by holding down the Alt key and dragging across the document. And when I do that, you can see that I now have a cursor again at the, every, at the end of every selection on a per line basis. And now I can go ahead and start to move that cursor around uh, simultaneously. I can insert content at all of those positions. And if I ever wanna get back from multi-cursor to single cursor, all I do is I hit escape. Awesome, what's next? Command click, so whereas uh, the first two things that we looked at adjusted multiple lines at the same time, we can be more precise in the way we implement or add cursors. And all we have to do is hold down the command button and click. And you can see I am now adding an individual cursor at every point in which I command click. So for example, let's say I wanna add a cursor in front of each at symbol. I could look through this and I could click here. Of course, clicking is sometimes uh, error prone. And let's say I accidentally click this one and it's, at the, it's after the at sign. No problem, all I gotta do is hit Command U, and that starts to undo the cursor changes. As you can see, I'm undoing the cursors. And if I wanna add cursors back in, I hit Command Shift U, and you can see I'm now adding the cursors back into the multi-cursors. Oh, I went too far, no problem. Command U brings that back out, and now I can Command Click and continue adding cursors to that selection. Super awesome. What's next? Command and drag. So in the previous ones, we saw how to adjust multiple lines that were siblings. We can be a little bit more targeted in the selections that we add using command and drag. So for example, I can click over here and I can command drag and you can see I'm creating a selection. And now I can, again, hold down the command key and drag again and you can see I'm actually adding a selection to that list of selections. Right, and again, because using a mouse is typically error prone, imagine that I come down here and I'm like, oh, I added an E there, that was an accident, no problem. We can do our Command U to unselect the previous selection change, and again, Command Shift U to re-add it. Or what I can actually do is I can do Command Shift Drag to sort of paint away portions of the selection. So I could do Command Shift and start dragging here and notice that I've just removed the E from that selection, and now I can continue on with my command drag. And of course, at this point, I can start moving those cursors around and editing content. So I could do something like command K, command U to uppercase all those and so on and so forth. Super awesome. All right, what's next? Command D. Command D uh, selects the next match of the current selection. So in the previous examples, we looked at having to sort of pinpoint our cursor in front of these at symbols. Well, we don't have to do that with such precision because we can actually just highlight the at symbol 
and then hit Command D, and you can see that they're automatically getting selected. Now again, I can use uh, Command U to start unselecting our selections, or Command Shift U to reselect them. And we can also use this Command K, Command D to skip a selection. Um, I don't have a great example to play with on this, but let's just say that we wanted to select every other uh, at symbol. I could hit Command D to move to the next one, and then Command K, Command D to skip this one, move on to the next one, and then I could hit Command D again to move on to the next match, and then I could hit Command K, Command D to skip that match and move on to the next one, and then Command D, and then Command K, Command D, and now we have selected the at symbol on every odd line. Command D I use like a million times a day. It's a fantastic, fantastic tool. You can see you can just quickly select a whole bunch of things. Uh, here we're selecting all of the commas. And again, everywhere that I have a cursor, I can now start to uh, adjust text. Okay, what's next? So Command, uh, Control Command G essentially does what Command D was doing except in one single go. So instead of using Command D to select each of these individually, I can highlight that and then do Control Command G and that will quickly match all of the matching elements here. And again, I can start to now uh, adjust these cursors individually. All right, keep on going. This uh, I actually never use, but it might be worth mentioning because maybe someone will find it interesting. Uh, essentially, it allows you to add a cursor above or below the current line. So by holding down Control Shift and going up, you can see that I'm adding a cursor on the row above. And by going Control Shift down, you can see I'm adding a cursor on the line below. Um, again, I don't really ever use this one, but I'm mentioning it because someone might find a interesting use for it. Keep on moving. All right, find all. So this is uh, basically a way to do what control command G was doing, except with more uh, in-depth functionality. So if I hit command F, right, I'm uh, finding text within this document. And what I could do is I can hit find all, and you can see that it has now selected all of the matches for that find. Now, the reason that this is super exciting is because we can actually use regular expressions, which is a whole nother productivity boost in your, uh, in your toolbox in conjunction with that find all. So for example, we could do uh, find the at, and let's do everything that's not a new line plus, right? So it's gonna match essentially everything after the at, find all, kablamo, we've just selected all of those email domains. And again, we can mutate these all, uh, we can move our cursors around all of those, uh, those multiple positions at the same time. All right, let's keep on going. Copy, paste. So one of the exciting things about having the multiple cursors and the multiple selections is that we can actually paste multiple things at the same time. So let's go ahead and let's uh, Command D all of our cursors here. Let's select all of the email addresses. And now if I return and I paste, you can see that those have pasted individually. Uh, but that's not just where it's exciting. So let's get rid of these again. Let's do our alt and drag to get all of our IDs. Let's paste those down here. And then let's go ahead and we'll do command control G to get all of the email addresses. And now if I actually paste, what you'll see is that it pastes the selection, the multi-selection clipboard across the multiple lines, uh, applying one item within the clipboard to each individual line. This is super, super powerful, and we'll, we'll, we can look at ways to really leverage this in a minute. All right, what else? Uh, indenting and dedenting multiple tabs, uh, multiple lines. So typically, uh, we can just do a multi-selection. I can do tab and then shift tab, and that will indent each line within the multi-line selection. Be careful this doesn't work on an individual line because it thinks that you're trying to actually insert the tab. Um, but what we can do on multiple lines, like we can do our alt and drag, and then here we can do command and right square bracket to indent that line, and command left square bracket to dedent that line. 
Uh, so indenting and dedenting multiple lines at the same time, super powerful. Again, we could do something like Command Shift G, select all of our ampersands or our at signs, and then Command Right Bracket, indent them. Very exciting. What else do we got? Oh, that's the end of the files. So when we look at individual things, it's a little bit hard to see sometimes uh, the power that you can get. And really, it's sort of uh, the, the productivity boost really starts to get amplified when you combine a bunch of these techniques in one go. So let's, let's just grab a new file here. And let's say that we want to um, translate this CSV, comma separated value, file into something like a, uh, a well first let's, let's try a couple things one um, let's say we want to get rid of the user underscore here no problem all we do is I can do command D select all those delete now we've gotten rid of the user it was redundant we all know what that was um, now let's say that we want to quote all of the values here no problem we're gonna do that around each individual field so I just do a little command Control G, select all of the commas, and I can insert a quote around each, quam, uh, each comma, and then I can jump to the end of each line. And now you see that we've wrapped quotes around each field within this CSV. But let's say that we don't even want to use a CSV. Let's say that we wanted to use some sort of a, a JSON file or a, or a new line delimited JSON file. Totally no problem. Uh, we could do Control A to select all of it. Then we could do uh, Command Shift L to break it across lines. Then we can start at each line and we can just start typing in, let's say, ID, right? Um, name. Now, here's where we get a little bit tricky because we have spaces in some of these names and not spaces in others. So if I try to say uh, Alt to the right, you'll see that I end up at weird places, right? Like this. Um, here on before the comma, and then, or so like here on before the quote, and a bunch of these on after the quote, so we need to get a little bit more interesting. No problem, we can see here that all of the emails only have a single value, so I can control shift G, get all of the at signs, go left, and at this point we know that we are in front of the email, so now we can just continue on. Let me turn off the word wrap, and at this point, I can do my alt and drag, and I can add my end brace. So here, by using multiple cursors, multiple selections, what you can see is that we have changed our CSV file into a JSON payload per line ID name, uh, sorry, ID value, name, value, email, value. And then we could, of course, do something like add this into a single payload. Of course, now we have to add commas at the end, no problem. We alt and drag to get a cursor per line. We command right to get to the end of the line. That's not specific to Sublime. Add the comma, remove the trailing comma, and kablamo, now we have all of these values in a single JSON payload. So hopefully you can start to see just how extremely powerful this can be. B. Um, let's take uh, let's let's try this a different way. So let's open up a new file, same data, and now let's try using. Uh, we want to do the same idea, except maybe let's try it with find, right? So with find, and this is one of the super exciting things about find again is that we can start to use regular expressions. Regular expressions are so exciting. Don't even get me started. I will freaking go off the deep end on how exciting regular expressions are. But let's do something like. Uh, we'll do a multi-line pattern match. Um, let me see. This is going to make sense. No, we don't. I don't think we need to do a multi-line. So let's get. Let's select everything that is not a comma, not a return character, not a new line. Let's get multiple characters in a row. And what you can see is that we now have each of these individual values. We can do our find all to do a selection. And if I hit quote, will it just immediately quote all these? Oh my goodness, how awesome is that? It just wrapped quotes around every single selection and we just quoted all of the values within our CSV file here. Oh, it's just it's just awesome. It's just awesome. I'm like, 
Even right now, I'm reliving all of the excitement that I felt when I first discovered all of this stuff. Um, so hopefully you are beginning to get a sense of some of the power here. Uh, I can't overemphasize how powerful Sublime Text multi-cursor, multi-selection functionality is. I know this is not all specific to Sublime. I'm sure a bunch of the other editors have this. So if the key commands are different, go learn them for your IDE. Go learn them for your text editor. It will change your life. I promise you. And hopefully you have found this interesting.